Uh, delighted to say I'm joined by Cork Hurler Patrick Horgan, who's teamed up with Centra for the launch of the Community Matters campaign, which will call on people across Ireland to show what matters most to them about their local community. So Centra have been sponsors of the All-Ireland Hurling Championship for 12 years, and they've, um, they're celebrating Ireland's communities and the strong bonds that have developed with their locality over the past 15 months. Uh, Patrick, how are you doing? Uh, getting through life all right? Good, yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, just happy we're back, uh, back on the field and... Uh, I suppose playing hurling again it was a bit dodgy there for a year and a half but um, it's all looking good again Yeah absolutely so you've gone through the league and some great performances and maybe a couple of performances where you're not overly happy but uh, looking forward to the championship and no better place to start than Limerick Yeah um, I suppose we, we got we got a, a bit what we wanted out of the league I suppose obviously a couple of results um, weren't too good uh, can you hear me? Yeah I can hear you yeah. Oh yeah Couple of results weren't too uh, too pleasing for us. Um, we didn't perform well in a couple of, I suppose, moments in games. Probably a ten minute stretch or a half against Limerick, maybe in the first half. But um, overall, I think uh, you know there's a lot of positives and something to look forward to um, going into the first game against Limerick in the championship now. Yeah. So just to go over some of your career, because you know we could ask the same old questions that you've been asked all day at these interviews. But I'm just wondering about your when you first came on the scene with Cork, and I know you made your debut in 2008, I think it was. But what do you remember of getting called up to the panel? Um, not too much actually. Um, I just think, um, geez, I actually don't. I, I can't remember that. But all I do know is, um. We would have played a lot against the senior team with the the Cork and the twenty ones at the time, and um, I know there's a couple of us from that uh, from that I suppose twenty one team called up the following winter I suppose to to train down and I think it was Mado. Um but I can't I can't remember how the phone call came because um, I'm not I'm actually I'm not sure I'm not sure how how it happened like how to who rang me or who told me it was training or, or whatever like that or who said I was on the panel but um yeah I, I the only the only thing I can remember from that year was actually coming on against Tipperary down the park in 2008 yeah yeah that was your debut that was uh, the year I think first time Tipperary had won there in in decades and decades do, do you remember coming on in that game and what it was like were you nervous yeah I came on for the last five minutes I think we ended up losing by four or five um. Yeah, very nervous. Like you know, it was full stadium. Uh, there was always a big support behind that Cork team, and there always is behind Cork teams. And you know, I suppose obviously nervous coming on for the for the first game, but um, yeah, it was enjoyable as well at the same time. Yeah, and uh, like your James Callanan made his debut. Then I think you played against Callanan as well later in that year. At some point, it's interesting how the three have continued. Even TJ Reid, who debuted the year before. That you continue to be so prominent. What what do you think it is about the the lads who graduated that year? Um, not sure. I just think like it's. Uh, I suppose we could have been a bit lucky as well coming at a time where um, you know the strength and conditioning kind of went up a notch there uh, a few years ago, and um, I suppose we were just around to to benefit from that as well. Um, mm. You know, I think if you look back over the last say uh, twelve to fourteen years. A lot of a lot of fellas' body shapes have changed between then and now, and uh, they're a lot leaner. Um, and I think that goes across the board, even through all all county hurlers now. Like they're all <clears throat> very lean, like and uh, able to run all day. And you know that era where obviously you've moved on from it a long point or a long way at this stage. But when the strikes were happening, and you're just a young player. That must have been a very strange time as a young player trying to just settle into the scene and things were going a little bit wrong, you know, at the top end with the county board, etc. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't remember too much about it, only that, um, you know, like, obviously, as players, as, as a young player, definitely breaking onto the, the panel, like, all we all I ever wanted to do was play hurling, and that was a bit strange to me. But, um, yeah, I suppose, look... <clears throat> Whatever way, whatever came out of it, I suppose we got back playing um, within, a, within a few months or whatever. And uh, thank God that's long forgotten. Well, it's not forgotten, but thank God it's in the past and uh, we're moving on. And I just, you know, I just enjoy playing Hurl of Cork, and uh, that's something I always wanted to do. And that was just mm, that, last year, John Myler was saying to me he thinks that. For a couple of years after that, on the back of that, that Cork lost probably a couple of games that they might have won in the previous years. 
and that you know then you start to get used to losing a couple of close games and he felt the the ram you know that that was felt for a couple of years after that Cork probably didn't win things they should have because of that do you, do you feel that or like I know a lot of these things are in the ancient past so it doesn't affect the current team but yeah. would that um to be honest with you, I I don't know I um that was a great team obviously the one that um was around that time as well but um maybe it was just coming you know coming to the end as all, all things they were like they had a good they had a good run that they won a they won a few all earns out of it like you know not a lot of people can say they they have two or three all earns and those fellas have like and maybe that was just the end of the team you know itself like maybe it was just uh that was the end and maybe losing those tight games that they wouldn't have liked you know if they were I don't know. I, I I'm not going to put it down to this, but even if they were uh, a couple of years uh, younger, even or something like that, they might have pulled it out. But that that just it comes in cycles. Like and you could put you could say the same about Kilkenny, even when they done what four or five in a row, and they won a crazy amount of all the runs. Like you know, everything. Yeah. Comes to, all good things. All good teams come to an end, and they just have to build again. You know. And do you do you remember? I know it's a good while ago, but when you felt like you had settled as an inter county hurler, did you have like? A performance where you scored a nice bit, and all of a sudden you felt like, right, I'm I'm happy at this level. I feel like it's not going to be a fleeting thing. Uh, no, there was never there was never a moment like that that happened. But um, I just felt um, something as small as um, you know being given the responsibility, of taking frees for uh, for the team, like it was big responsibility for me, obviously. And um, as soon as I got that responsibility, I just felt like kind of you know. Not more, not not more pressure on me, but I, I like that. I like that feeling of have, uh, having the, you no, know, having having that on me that you know, I have to strike the freeze. And obviously, the way things are going, like you have to be hitting like nine out of ten, ten out of ten to be even uh, level with the opposition because all free takers these days are really good. Like you know, for you was the first day that you were named to take the freeze. Did you feel a pressure going out taking them, even the first one? Uh, not 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 really because um i always find that um so you, know, you could be talking about technique and you could be talking about uh pressure all day like but i honestly thought that i was after practicing so much that like it wasn't a case of just oh do what you practice but i think it was it was more autopilot than anything like your body just is so used to that uh those movements of you know the pick the strike that um yeah I, I never felt uh felt any pressure taking freeze for craft now yeah because other people would be probably tr i presume like a good free i mean i wouldn't be able to 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 understand what it feels like but when you're in a stadium with 50 thousand 80 thousand people around you do you like you go into autopilot or whatever can you explain how that even works because i think for most other people to be like there's eighty thousand people gawking at me here never mind what's on tv yeah you know it's uh to think about it now, it is a bit uh, a bit strange and stuff. And is it like you know you think, oh yeah, there'd be pressure on there. But I think like fellas are, are after um, practicing so much that like it's nearly it's just automatic. Like and I like it's all on the day. Then like of course it's all about how you how you approach it. Like you know if you're if the first thing in your mind like is when you get a free in the sideline and sixty five. If it's to think about it, whether you're behind the chains, then so. I don't know, I just think it's all about body language and, you know, forcing yourself to believe that, you know, you're 9 out of 10, so even if you do miss one, you're guaranteed the next kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Are, are you ever, do you ever get gun shy when you're, like, shooting from play? It seems like you're happy enough to shoot from more or less any angle, but do you ever get to a part of your career where you're doubting yourself or your confidence gets low, or do you just shoot on sight anyway? <laughs> Keep pulling the trigger if you don't have to go over. Uh, no, uh, um, only once I can remember, like you know, chances that I that I had that I probably you know would have scored. Normally, um, they were probably easy enough chances. That was in two thousand and fourteen against Tipperary. Um, yeah, the semi final, the All Ireland yeah, semi final. Yeah, there was four or five. Even in the first half, I think there was four or five easy enough chances, like where by the clear shot, there was no real pressure on and. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, pull it. Hope that I don't know what the reason for because it wasn't like that before or after or whatever. But uh, yeah, they just didn't go over, and that was that is it.
Yeah, just uh, your score in 2013, you're the one that almost won the All-Ireland. I'm just wondering, can you sort of take me back to that? Because, you know, I've watched it a few times, Brendan Vogler hanging out of you, if I remember correctly. But it wasn't an easy ball coming to you, flicked it on the run and knocked it over. I mean, what are your, what's your recollection of that? You must have even been jaded at that stage. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how I was in the position, because I think I was, um, I was supposed to be playing corner forward, full forward at the time. But um, no, I just I just found myself in an area where uh, I thought I had a little space anyway, and it, it's one of those things like if 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 he duffs the sideline or cuts it over my head, it's it's never spoke about. But I don't know. I just I suppose it, it bongs perfect um, in front of me, and I just thought if I could get my hurry to it before the defender could come through and probably take you the ball, your hurry and everything. I just thought I, if I could get a touch on the ball first. Um, I'd have a bit of a chance of knocking it out into space, but luckily enough, it actually, I, I stayed, um, I controlled the ball through the whole time, and uh, yeah, lucky enough, I just tried this kind of swing or whatever, and uh, just, I don't even, I still don't even know did it go inside the post, to be honest with you, it was so close to it. Um, yeah, and yeah, probably should have won the all Ireland, but like, the time was up for sure, that's... Uh, I wasn't going to take it there now, but what I was going to ask you is, you know, like as we get more and more modern with all the approaches, it's all about the percentages and get behind the ball and also get your body behind the ball. That doing something like that, where it's like, if I think it, like one hand out and just flick it up to yourself, is, you know, how do you find the balance between telling players, do those nonchalant flicks that actually can work brilliantly and get you a bit of space versus be robotic or, you know, just look after every percentage? Um. <clears throat> I'm not sure how that works because as a forward, I know um, for being the position I am, and maybe maybe we can do it in the forwards because if you do it out the field, there's probably more of a risk to it. Um, but I find uh, a lot of the cock forwards, like you know, their you know their their stick work is really good, and you know they knock a ball into space or instead of taking it the hand for all different reasons, like you know if you take it in the hand, you could be running into trouble or anything like that. Can't hear you there, uh, Patrick. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you again now. Yeah. Came back, yeah. Yeah, I find a lot of the cork, uh, cork forward seem to do it like they do a lot of uh, not fancy or tricky stuff, but it's just all uh, gives them a better chance of getting on the ball, like you know, knocking at the space or anything like that. Mm, yeah. Do, would there have been any times in your career where, like, I know I asked you, you t spoke about 2014 against Tip, but like when you lost in 2016 to Wexford, first championship defeat to them in 60 years, I think, did it ever feel like the wheels were coming off? Because you, like, you obviously turned it around brilliantly the next year, but even for yourself, I think Kieran Kingston left you out of, of a couple of games in the league the following February against Kilkenny and Waterford. Like, would you have had doubts about where the team was going, where you were going? Um. Not much. I just think it was it was probably a hard year um, in 2016 overall. Like I think we, to be fair, I actually I remember back that year as being probably one of the hardest years we've trained. Um, and like whether it had something to do with it or not, I don't know. But um, a lot of I think we played Tip in brutal rain the, uh, around the same year up in Torles. They beat us, and then we played Wexford in brutal rain again. Uh, and it was just, I don't know, it was just one of those things where um, things weren't kind of clicking and uh, yeah, that was, I'm not sure what to put it down to, but I suppose we, we turned around and came back the following year in 2017 and um, we we're a completely different team. Like we were, uh, like we we won Munster that year and probably should have went uh, a bit further, but um, just a bit unlucky and stuff. But yeah, it's, it was mad to change, but I not, I, I, did, I would never doubt any team that, um, I'd ever be a part of, and um, I always think we have a chance to like, start in any season. Mm. And does does outside talk ever bother you? And I mean personally now, because you know I'm sure there's hundreds of articles written about you over the last twelve or thirteen years, maybe even more. Do, do you ignore it? Does it bother you? Do you ever read it? No, I never. I never see it. Um, I never see anything like that. Um, I just think. <sighs> By reading anything, whether it's good or whether it's going to be bad, it's not going to help you uh, on the field, you know. So I try to, well, I don't read it. That's that's uh, guaranteed. But I just try on the field. Like if I know I do something wrong on the field, I like I'll be the first to know. There's no one needs to tell me. Um, and I'll work on it myself. 
and I just I honestly just tried to go training and, and like enjoy every training and try to get better every day and like like the day that that stops is probably the day I will give up playing like because I won't I won't be enjoying it at that stage and I just enjoy the challenge of <clears throat> myself uh just showing up uh, every day and trying to be a better player leaving training and that's that's probably as easy as it could get you yeah, because like when I think of all the thousands of words that must be written about you, yeah, this is obviously a club level. But I once did an interview before a big club match for for Kula, and when someone mentioned maybe the writer's name before the game, that actually got into my head a bit. Like the game actually went fine, but I just wonder when so much has been written about you, was there ever an occasion when someone brought up an article you'd done before a match and it might have got into your head, or does it like do you just have able to block it all out? Yeah, to, to be honest with you, I. I honestly and people like the most important people to me like would be obviously friends family teammates as well they kind of know they kind of know uh, the type of person I am as well that I don't want to hear that because it does it won't make any difference to me good or bad so um they like they know to keep it away from me but um I'd have no interest in it and as I say I started playing hurling when I was I don't know eight or nine and the only reason I played is because I enjoyed it. And um, that's still what I try to do today. So, like, I don't see it as a job or I have to do this or I have to do that. I actually, <clears throat> I find it very enjoyable. And um, that's that's what I play for. Like, uh, I have a job as well during the day. So <clears throat> I don't want to be, you know, going down train and thinking that it's work as well, that I have to do this and do that. I just really go with the flow and try to enjoy every minute. <clears throat> And d did you ever get the balance right and, or wrong in terms of preparation? I remember once Tomas Mulcahy said you'd got, this is five or six years ago, he said you'd got very big, you were in the gym and all that kind of stuff. Now, he wasn't criticising you or anything like that in any way, shape or form. But like, did you, did you feel you always got the balance of preparation right? Um, yeah, well, look, um, a, a, few, like, a good few years ago, I would have probably overtrained everything, like over uh, hurled gym everything i would have just done way too much of everything and i just find as as i go on um the difference is i kind of two seconds there can we pause it or a second yeah yeah two seconds Sorry, bye. You're all right. No panic. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah, I was asking, did you ever kind of get the balance wrong in terms of the amount of preparation you were doing, or did it ever, you know, did you ever start to not enjoy it because you were overdoing it? Yeah, well, I always enjoyed it, and that was probably the, the reason I'd done too much. Um, I just wanted to keep hurling, keep training every day for hours and hours, tried to be a training two and a half hours before training on the field, and loads of stuff like that, but I find as I go on, like, um, you know, more specific training uh, to suit myself is probably, and the position I'm in, um, kind of helps a bit better. And, uh, you know, I always keep the hunger as well as uh, on top of that. Mm. How good are that this next, uh, obviously not to build them up, but like there seems to be great talent with some of the forwards that are coming through. Like Alan Connolly's really impress, impressed me with some of the, the moments he's had. Obviously, Alan Cadigan's there a long time now as well. Shane Kingston's very good. Like there are a lot of very good forwards around you. Like and having come through that, being a talented young player, and you know, a couple of years, then you're very established. Like, how good can those players be? Yeah, I think they're unbelievable players. Obviously, um, Shane Barrett, Shane Barrett's another one. Um, Alan Connolly, uh, Connor Cahalan, Jack o I mean, Jack O'Connor, O'Connor. Yeah, I didn't even think him because he's he's been there a, a while now. He's flying. Mm. Um, yeah, like they're all <clears throat> really good players. Uh, and the best thing I think about them is like they're all, you know, hungry to get better every day. Like to go training every day, and all these fellas are one of the first on the field and looking at areas they can get better themselves. Like, and that's uh, that's always a good thing to see. So, so uh, based on the way you talk about her and how much you love it, that type of thing, I can see. I, I could imagine you as forty-five years of age still playing junior B with the Glen. Does that sound about right? Uh. Probably, yeah. Um, I I don't know how that I don't know how that will work, but because um, if I'm playing, I I be training every day, so <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Look, I'll obviously play as long as I can, um, as much as I enjoy. But 
playing playing is one thing, but I, I love the preparation side of it as well. Like and love the you know looking at the the half percents and the one percent, whatever the smallest of the details. Maybe maybe I don't know, it could be over the top, whatever. But I just, I enjoy that side of it, and uh, that's something I always look into. Do you put a big effort into the mental preparation? Some players visualize stuff like that. Others just go out and let it happen. Um, yeah, I suppose, look, every fellow would look uh, at all different small things, but I think the, the mental side of it is, is obviously uh, a key as well because that's part of the reason why you wouldn't be reading any kind of rubbish or uh, about, your, about yourself, about your team. Um, because, as you say, no matter what you hear, it's like it sticks in there, like you know what I mean. So, uh, not that it sticks in there, but you've read it, so you've you you can't unread it. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and it's even the same about how uh, how you how you speak to yourself, like you know how you think and you how you think to yourself. You have a minute there to yourself how you think, and or you're driving up the road without even thinking. You're probably playing a match. Is it positive? You're thinking. Is it negative? Like and being able to being able to uh, understand. How you're thinking and and change your thinking is um uh, a big plus if you can if you can do that. Mm. Am I right in thinking you're a bit an NFL fan, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Brady. Tom Brady fan anyway. Yeah. So what do you make of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning last year? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> they'll do it again this year. Um, do you think I so? Think yeah. Think the Titans look good. They're after adding in Julio Jones. Yeah, they can add who they want, but. I think Brady's just Brady's just I don't know he's a step ahead of everyone. It has obviously nothing to do uh, with how you uh, how you move or athletically or anything like that. Like his brain is just so far ahead of everyone's in 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 all parts of his play really. Because if you ever hear him like he's uh, he's mad into preparation and uh, trying to get his teammates better as well. It's just I don't know it's crazy how he uh, how he operates like. And do you read into what he does? You know, he has the pliability and TB12 preparation, all this type of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I, yeah, he doesn't believe in the gym, but sure. <laughs> That's grand when you're stepping back into the pocket there and there's no one laying a glove in you. Like. Yeah, and the big monsters there protecting yeah. you. Um, all right, well, look, really appreciate that, Patrick. Good, chat, good to chat to you as ever. And uh, yeah, all the best with everything for the season. Thanks for that, Jane. Join the Our Game Supporters Club at Patreon for €5 Euros per month to get audio podcasts of the Hurling and Football Show and much more exclusive material.